and Claire from Aruna Exotics. Um, this wasn't my first video that I planned to upload to YouTube, um, forgive the Aruna Room flies, um, but I had some exciting stuff going on in the Aruna Room this week and I really wanted to share it with you. So um, let me show you. I'll just show you briefly. But this is what I'm going to be talking about quickly today. This is a giant Atticus Atlas moth, a little female. She actually hatched last Tuesday, so um, when I checked on her this morning and found that she hadn't laid me any legs, eggs last night and looked back on my camera to see how old she was, it actually turns out that she is seven days old tomorrow, which is normally how long they live. So I wanted to quickly do this video with you so you could see her and share in my news. Um, unfortunately, a male hasn't hatched with her this time. I have some more cocoons hanging so I'm still hopeful um, she came out of this cocoon here I do have a male cocoon here for size reference this one hasn't hatched yet I'm still hopeful um, I had a male hatched um, hopefully they'd have bred. You can hand pair them. There are videos of hand pairing them on YouTube to guarantee the fertility. Um, had she have bred, these little eggs here would have been fertile and I've had, I'd have had some little caterpillars in 10 days time. But unfortunately that hasn't happened this time. So we just get this beautiful girl to look at. So I'll give you a bit of information. She's a giant Atticus Atlas moth. A lot of people call them giant Asian moths. They're from Southeast Asia. Um, they live in subtropical rainforests in the canopies where the temperature's a little bit lower. Um, so they're around 25. Um, I, when I got these cocoons, I got them on the 1st of March. Um, they had been in diapers over winter, so they've been kept cool to stop them hatching. And they came with the instructions that you should slowly raise their temperature over three or four weeks from uh, whatever temperatures we were at at the time. So I think we were around 16 at the time, um, up to 25. So that's what I did. I brought them into the Aruna room. I had them in the cooler corner um, with their own heater so I could control it a bit better. Um, and I slowly raised the temperature to about 18 to begin with and then up to 20 and then I got up to about 24 um, and then the temperatures generally outside were getting a bit warmer and I think the little heat wave that we've just had has spurred this one on to hatch. So yeah, um, I was misting them every other day. I hadn't misted them recently because it had been a few weeks and I thought that they were, weren't going to come to anything if I'm honest um, so you can imagine how excited I was when I came in to see this huge moth just absolutely perfect um, drying out her wings up on the board um, I will put some pictures of her on the end of this video from the day that she hatched because she was a lot thicker a lot brighter um, she hasn't taken on too much damage but she has aged um, I have a friend that is um into the pinning who'd like her so she's going to go to her and hopefully um she's not going to have too much damage and she's going to look beautiful and stay beautiful um so yeah the eggs take 10 days to hatch they go, go through five larval instar stages over about 30 to 40 days eating as much as they possibly can to get as thick as they possibly can to live as long as they possibly can once they come out of their pupae um she must have eaten a lot <laughs> because she was really thick and she's still quite thick now but she was really really thick mm -hmm. um the caterpillars uh do well in this country on privet but privet's easy to get hold of uh they need well ventilated but good humidity um and just lots and lots of food um i really want to do the caterpillar side of it they're stunning little spiky green and white uh caterpillars and I'd like to do the process from the beginning. So fingers crossed that my others hatch around the same time. Um, if a male hatches, the female releases pheromones. Every night he'll go looking for her. Hopefully they'll pair and then the eggs will be fertile. There are videos on YouTube of hand pairing. You can actually pair them to get fertile eggs by hand. If you're free reining them and stuff, sometimes they might not find each other 
um, or other elements like other animals or whatever, other scents and things could get in the way. So yeah, there is, that's one characteristic, characteristic of this species is that you can actually hand pair them. Um, and then yeah, you, you get your eggs and then you get your caterpillars and then you get your pupae and cocoon and here you get these guys. So let me move that out of the way and give you a better look at this girl. Like I said, I'll put some pictures on of the day that she hatched because she is absolutely magnificent. Just look at that. What a stunning moth. Just the, I mean, I, I've read and I've seen online that the wingspan can get up to 26 um, centimetres. Males are normally around 23, a bit smaller. Um, but it's not until you see them in person, especially to the native UK compared to native UK ones. They're just huge. I feel like she's shrunk a little bit as she's got older over the week. Um, and her wings are a little bit crinkled around the edges like they might have shrunk a little bit. Those windows are just amazing. Those antennae there, look. Those colours. The purple along here is just stunning. So fluffy, like I said, she's still got some weight to her, but she is definitely a lot slower than she was when she hatched. I've kept her free reign, so she's just been she's been sat on these fake plants over by the window, and every night, every morning, I've come in and she's been laying her eggs on well, the first night she laid them up the window and then um every other night she's laid them on the window ledge but last night she didn't lay any eggs and she didn't move a lot so i wanted to get this video for you today before it's too late but i will be able to update you on my other cocoons and fingers crossed we get some fertile caterpillars this is 100 percent something i'm going to do again i most definitely am going to get some more cocoons it's not too late in the year to get some more now, which I probably shouldn't do, but I might have to. I'd love to do the lunar moths, but they, the caterpillars for those guys need some food sources that I don't think I've got ready available to me where I live. So I'm going to look do some more research on that. Oh, just look at that. Incredible. incredible I'm so excited for the others to hatch but this one this one's going to hold a place in my heart for a long long time because it's the first ever one and I was just absolutely gobsmacked to find her which is silly because obviously I had the cocoons hanging and I know they're supposed to hatch, but because they hadn't hatched in that six weeks period that they say that they're going to hatch and I had stopped spraying them and I felt like maybe I'd done something wrong or they hadn't coped well with the postage. <laughs> She's just beautiful. Got a little bit of a tear over here but when a lot of people raise them in um, like cages and things and they can end up with an awful lot of tears just from the bars which is why I wanted her to be free reign she's lost a bit of the fur on her head from old age that was a bit fluffier when she first hatched easy one way easy easy Pop 
be down. So yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, anybody thinking about it, do it. it, it there's, there's no better feeling than finding them emerge from the cocoon and just absolutely stunning. Camera doesn't do her justice. Um, her size is just, you just can't, you just can't explain it. And um, yeah, what a brilliant experience. I'm really, really, really grateful that I got to experience that. And I will keep you updated with my other cocoons. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me waffle on about my exciting news. And um, watch this space for some more of these beauties. Thanks. Take care.